Hello and welcome to yet another episode of my podcast. In this episode we will talk about the uncommon ways of life. Also because we are at the end of the year this will be the last episode for this year 2022. Next year I'll come up with more interesting content. And while at it if you're liking the content that I've been creating please rate it and subscribe to my podcast. So without any further ado it's time to have a word with me Rajiv Thawar. See you on the other side of the intro music. What really is an uncommon way of life? Well, in this country and in most countries the thing is that people are always in a herd kind of a mindset. What 100 people are doing, I will do the same. And because 100 people are doing this, it should ideally be the right thing to do. But those few people who break the curse, break this herd mentality and think in a contrarian fashion, move away from the herd are generally labeled arrogant. However, if you look back in history, you will notice that most of the people who've achieved something in life make a positive impact or change something in the world around us. These have all been people who have had a contrarian thought process. They were not thinking like the herd. And this uncommon approach is not just limited to their financial life or their professional life. It's it's a part of them. They do this in every aspect of their life. It takes a lot of guts to be able to think and to act away from what the herd does, to behave differently, to have goals which the herd doesn't understand or cannot relate with. If we look at a more personal life example we hold on to relationships thinking that these need to last forever whether it's a friendship or it's something else but what's more important than a relationship or an association lasting forever is the quality of that relationship or association for instance it doesn't matter if a friendship lasted only a few years but what matters is was it full of life in those few years was it impactful positively in those few years continuing with the pretense of a friendship that doesn't fulfill you is what the herd does the world is full of hollow associations but one question that you can ask yourself is was your friendship in those limited years more meaningful we sometimes tend to get under the pressure of living in certain situations forever and because we don't wish to question we believe that time equals good intent we've been with people for a long time so they would have the best intentions for us comfort zone and routine are the pills we pop this also stems from a sense of deep fear we believe that the moment we think about an uncommon way of leading our life it will become fodder to gossip mills and honestly in most scenarios we are subjected to hate and negativity when we do something in our life that's away from what most others are doing but just because most people find something sensible it's not necessarily the only way to go about things isn't it the trying too hard to fit in culture is also equally responsible for this herd mentality the other aspect is that you also believe that because the person on the other side has been family or a friend for years they will only want you to bloom but the reality my friend can be far from this sometimes family hurts you unintentionally sometimes they do it intentionally too we've all got our reasons to justify our actions so we can't really generalize everything here but because of this default conditioning we justify everything that could be toxic around us as well sometimes people are extremely close to us only to feed off our miseries and that is something we don't really understand some of our closest people for instance will be rooting for us and happy for us until they realize that we've broken the glass ceiling and we're moving beyond them in their head all of a sudden we become competition and most people don't like their competition to succeed the irony of life is that we are born with default settings and these settings are based on the best and worst that our parents have experienced that's what they impart to us if they were unsuccessful in some aspect of their life they are certain that it's bad for us as well 
but no single person can be blamed for this it's typically the societal conditioning that is mostly responsible for a scenario like this however despite the risk of coming across as arrogant some of us are able to break the curse question the default setting and even change it because that's the only way to reach our maximum potential another common thing that goes around is choosing to disagree with somebody who's older than you would showcase disrespect now that is a thought process that needs to be relooked at for sure we've seen tons of examples around us we've read about them that age has nothing to do with maturity or knowledge and a lot of times because of this conditioning we also end up being okay with the idea of a narcissist elderly person around us or even somebody who's of the same age but they are narcissist in their approach everything revolves around them everything is for them they would provoke you and then you end up doing stuff and then they play the victim role they promise you that they would improve they would change but all that is an act So all this happens around us and we do not really know how to get rid of this toxic culture. Now we are all human beings. We change with time, with experiences, and we are not perfect. We make mistakes, we go wrong, we make blunders. But how is it that some people in our lives are treated as the most perfect people who can never go wrong? These could be parents, these could be people who are Uh, your relatives or or even friends who've been around you for ages how does a relationship or the time that you've spent with somebody guarantee that they were never toxic and could never become toxic in the future marriage is the other aspect of this a lot of people who are older to us would always say that there's a certain time to get married because you don't want to be too old that your kid barely gets to spend time with you that could be an apt logic for some of us but not for everybody it cannot be an umbrella statement or a piece of advice that would set for every single person some of us are not ready to get married some of us are not ready to take up a job because we are probably made for entrepreneurship some of us are not ready to have kids because deep within we know that we would be lousy parents but we go ahead because of the pressure of the elderly and our peers while i don't know anything about parenting i know for a fact that the world that our parents grew up in doesn't exist anymore so i'm not sure if the same parenting concepts will hold good today at least some of these will need to be relooked at for instance there were no mobiles or the internet when our parents were growing up and the kind of negative impact that these two things can single handedly have on a child's well-being is beyond one's imagination generalization is probably one of the biggest wars that we have to fight the problem is that what we don't understand we are very quick to come to a conclusion that it might be wrong bad or negative If somebody is leading a life that we don't understand then we are sure that there is something terribly wrong with those people today i thought that i'll talk about a general aspect of life the uncommon way of life and how this uncommon way impacts us and people around us as always i hope that you liked this piece of content if you did please share i am sure you will positively impact someone thank you